Okay, thanks, thanks very much for waiting on that. Uh, my name is Rob Lawrence, and I'll be showing you the project expert today. I'll just set up a slideshow for us at the start, just um, to show what we're going to be doing today. So the webinar outline for today, um, we'll just quickly look at why should we plan, why should we use um, planning tools. We'll then just go through setting up a typical project using Project Expert. And I'm just going to go through it um, without importing it from Estimator to start with, just because you can use it as a standalone um, tool or you, know, you can use it with Estimator Express. And um, we'll go back to that at the end just to show you um, the advantages of using it with the estimator as well. But it is, of course, a very good tool using it on its own. We'll then go through just explaining and creating the critical path. Um, it's quite an important thing, I think, for the software because it um, keeps your jobs on time. It shows you them activities which, if they do delay, it will cause a problem for your project in the end. So we go through that. We'll then go through how we monitor progress and identify the effects of delay. And then we go through showing how we can import from the estimator into the project to reduce planning time and merging projects together to control the resources. And then at the end, we just go through um, a Q&A session. So I think on your screens, you should be able to um, type in um, messages on there. And you can um, you know, start typing in questions now. And I'll be uh, able to answer a couple at the end. And then what we do is um, the ones I can't um, won't be able to answer because of time. I'll just send you through an email with the answer, or I'll give you a call on Monday for it. Okay, brilliant stuff. So I'll just close this for a second. Okay, so we just want to look at now why do we use planning tools? So we use planning tools really to think ahead. So it's just there to be put down on a, you know, on the computer, on a piece of paper, you know, little things, just so you don't forget, but it's things that you can use for a contractual basis. So you can um, show your client at the start of the job, and then if there was anything wrong, like inclement weather, for example, you can show on the, on the graph where your progress was, um, you know, from the inclement weather, for example, um, when it's um, the delay, what, how long the delay has been, and you know them reasons, so it doesn't cause you any um, financial difficulties. Them asking you know to keep it back on time. Um, we also use it to identify problems um, which could come later on in a job, or and to consider alternative methods. So you could have it, you know, your job read out, and you could have something bespoke in there which might have, you know, something um, a long a long time period um, for an ordering process, and you might want that um, that could that could cause a problem later on and cause a delay. So we can consider alternative methods for using planning tools um, to work around that to keep the job on time, and we can also use it to make an efficient use of resources, which we we'll show you later on, especially in the import from the estimator. We can also um, use it. It also does establish the time required for a project, and from that we can develop a cash flow forecast. So you know, you know, the money going out throughout your project, and then we can add in little things like valuations, just to keep them, um, you know, see when your money is coming back in. So that's what um, you know the project expert can do as well, as well as what we're going to show you from producing a program against progress. Um, chart that can be monitored against. So when you're monitoring your progress on there, it will show you um, how that affects, you know, your cash flow for the job, and if there is a delay, you know, the money you could be losing out on. So what we do now, we just come out of this and we're open up um, the project expert. So this is um, Project Expert from Fresh without anything um, being put into it. And we'll just show you just quickly the basics of how you can just set up yourself from scratch. Um, just I think it's a good thing for you to know. Um, just so there's through estimate, there is a few shortcuts in there. And it's just good to know these at the start. Um, so the first thing, the most important bit is obviously on here, um, from my setup, I've got it at the 10th of um, um, October 2010 when the software is first developed. Um, just to let you know as well, we've got a new um, project expert coming out in the new year. Um, 
I think it um, hopefully will be in the January period. And if you do buy um, Project Expert um, discounted price now, you will get that upgrade um, um, free of charge. Okay, so to get this back on the right timeline, all we have to do is click on the right uh, mouse button, pick up the view uh, details for the project, and we can just put the targets, uh, the time now, and the target state. So if we pop on this to say we start our job on Monday, I've just got to obviously forward this in. So we've got our date in there now. I'll just pop this in uh, for the 19th, let's say that for example. So you can see when that job's starting. And it just load up in a second. And if we go back, it actually just puts in this uh, red line in here, which shows the time now. And that's a very, this is going to be a very useful tool um, for later on in the project to sh um, put time against and show your progress again. Uh, just to direct around the page, some essential um, buttons and tools you're going to need to know is the indent button here. Uh, we'll show you why in a little bit. Um, another key tool in the project is in the uh, insert um, in the tool, sorry, we need to store the baseline once we've done the project so we can put the progress against it. We've got all our progress bars down here and then we've got different chart layouts and different tables um, which we can put costs in, um, we can go into progress and Earn value. So in the demonstration today, what I'll be showing you is why the key things are, which is obviously the entry table. We go into the progress table, the resource costs, and the earned value table. And then the graphs at the bottom, the histogram. This will be shown in the estimator, which will show all your labor resources, plant, and material being put down there, um, which will show a resources histogram, which is like a bar chart going across along the bottom here. Um, what we show for this um, this part of the demonstration will be the cash flow against there. So it's very simple just to um, start off a project. For example, I'll just do this really quick. I've got a couple of Blue Peter moments in here so I can bring up another screen. But what we have, if I just type in the name of the job, I'll just put HBXL. Oh, sorry, got to click on there obviously first. I click on there, highlight there, I can just write in there, HBXL demo. And then underneath there, it's um, started off from the 19th where we said our start date was. It's just put a timeline in there. What you want to do is just put in a few activities. I'll just put a few in now just to show you how easy it is to, imp just to pop in um, some activities. So site setup, I can just press the down key on the keyboard. Uh, we put in the excavate foundations in here. We go to oversight. Rick work. Block work. I'll just pop in the roof structure as well. Obviously, on a typical job, there'd be a lot more activities like this, but for purposes of demonstration, I'll just show you just the setup of what you need to do if you were doing this from scratch without estimator. And um, what are we doing? Roof structure. So I just pop that in there. Now, what we've seen in here now, we've just added in all the activities that I just wanted to show you quickly um, and it's shown that in bar charts along the top here. Obviously it wouldn't be like that on a typical job, they do not start all at the same time. So what we want to do to start with is to use the indent button um, at the top. So if you, what you can do is if you top on um, the HBXL demo, the name for the job, if I hold the left uh, button down on the mouse, I can scroll down and press the indent. Now what that's done is just um, started the timeline up for this job. Okay. What we want to do next is, 
we just want to put in our durations, just put our time scale in. So I say the site setup could take five days. I could say the Xgate foundations might be 10 days. So you can just type them in, or you can actually move them on here as well. I say the oversight, um, 10 days again. Brickwork, 15 days. Blockwork, 10 days. And roof structure, I'll say 10 days as well, for example. Now, what we want to do next is is start to um, put in the predecessing activities to start our timeline going across. And what that will do is it will create um, our critical path for us, which I'll explain for you in a second. So if I go across, take the resources in, I can just go on the predecessing activities. And if I just click on the site setup, I can see that's number two on the ID number. So all I have to do to put my predecessing activities in is as soon as, for example, the site setup is done, I can start excavating my foundations. So I can put two in there. And that's just started to move that along, as you see. And it's obviously up the duration date to 15 days um, from probably it was 10 days before, but that's, it was along there. OK, so that would be number three. So after the foundations, I can do the oversight. Just put three in. And it's just, again just showing it going along. And then the brickwork I can do after um, the Excavate Foundations as well. I can also do start the block work at the same time. And then once the brick and block work is done, I can do the roof structure. So I can just put five and six in here. So that's actually quite key, putting the five and the six in, because it starts to create the critical path. So I can actually change my standard layout view. If I change this to default, it will show red and it will show um, some blue activities. And what the red activities are, are the critical path. Now if I go back to my PowerPoint on here and I open critical path, the critical path definition is, is basically, so if I'm putting in the predecessing activities, it will create the critical path, the red lines. It will do it automatically for you on projects, but it will create the longest sequence of activities in a project plan, which must be completed on time for the project to be completed on its due date. An activity on a critical path cannot be started until its predecessing activity is complete. If it's delayed for a day, the whole project will be delayed for a day unless the activity following the day um, delayed activity is completed a day earlier. Okay, that might sound a little bit confusing, but if I just come out of this again and go into my what I just set up here quickly, if I look on my roof structure, for example, and go into my, you click this open, it gives up the activity details. If I go into actual, um, if I go into the links here, it shows the roof structure is linked to the brickwork and blockwork. The critical activity has zero float, so it has to start as soon as this finishes, as soon as the oversight finished, and it means it has to be done in this time. What we've seen with the blue, um, with the blue activity is the blockwork, and that's showing that has um, a float of five days. So this actually could go on for a little bit longer. So it's something, once you've created your project, which will be a lot more detailed than this going along, and it has a lot more blue and red lines, um, you can show the with the blue activity lines, you can have a little look at it. You can see, oh, I've got five days on there, so I could maybe take a few men off that, um, that bit. Obviously, it's brick and block work, so I'm sure you'd have the same gang in it. But if it was uh, a different... Um, type of activity um, where they're crossing and they were different type of labor used, you could maybe move them over to another job you were doing um, or you could have less men on it to make an efficient use of resources. So that was just basically just showing you quickly how you can set up um, from scratch yourself without using Estimator. Okay? I'll now, um, I'll now just go on to my uh, Blue Peter moment and bring up one I did earlier. So this is a typical project um, you might do uh, for a house build, for example. So if I scroll down here, 
I've got all my activities, and I've got my handover at the end. I just pop this onto zero. It just creates an end node, so it means if I put another um, job underneath it, it won't link. It won't link in with the critical path, so it keeps it two separate jobs. But you can still control the labor resources. So you can see on these, obviously, there's a lot of um, activities which are non-critical, which you can move about in these uh, timelines. What I want to show you on here is just how you can add in your. We go through on this part the how you can monitor your progress, and then how you can also monitor your costs um, through the job. So on here, what we got is I've this was done a, a while ago, so I've got a different timeline in here. But if um, I can drop down this box and I can actually put in resources costs. So if you were importing from Estimator Express. Um, it would show your labor costs, plant costs, material costs, all in there for you. And if it was a subcontractor cost, it would have a lump sum figure on there. Um, obviously, I started this up from scratch. So um, because I haven't put in for SMA, I have to put my own cost in. What you can do is, if you are using the, um, the software like this, you can just put in a lump sum cost for all the different aspects of the job. So if you knew how much it costs for your excavate your foundations, you can just put a, a lump figure in with your labor, plant, and material obviously built into that. So if I just, for example, popped on the, this is a thousand pounds in here for my site setup, it just totals it at the top through the, using the indent button, which I'd already put on. So if I just say, for example, just for demonstration purposes, everything costs a thousand pounds in this job. I use the arrow key, just like Excel scrolling down. It says fill the selected box with the current um, item of value. I can put yes on there, and it's just totaled that up to twenty-nine um, thousand. Was obviously got twenty-nine activities in there, and I put them all in a thousand pounds each. So when once I've put that cost in, what I want to do is I want to go back to my entry table, and I just want to store the baseline in here. So I do that by going into my tools and going store baseline. Press OK, and what that will do, if there's any change to the job, it will actually show me, um, um, if there's a delay, it will show me the, what, how long it's delayed for and how much I could be losing out on the money side of things. So what I want to show you quickly now is just if I um, popped in my um, red line, which I showed you before, the actual time scale, um, the actual time now, if I change that from this date now to, say, in January sometime, so I could go for, I have to go backwards, so I have to go to January the... 10th, for example, press OK on there, press OK, and what that should have done is, with these tables, uh, to monitor your progress, you can go in here and you say, at this date, I actually should be 29% through on this job. Uh, it says all the activities which should be complete, and what, what actually have been complete, so I haven't put anything in, in there, so it's just showing... So it's just um, showing there the actual um, time in there. What I can do now is I can start filling this in. So if I go into here, I can just click on using these tools here. I can either type it in or I can use these tools up here. So these are just saying how complete it is. So if you were looking at your, um, you had your job done and all um, up on here and you were just um, popping in your percentages each month, how far you're um, going through. You can just pop it on here. I'm saying that's complete. This is complete now. And it just highlights it in green. You can change the colors um, by clicking right and going in the chart properties. I won't show you that today. But you can do that very simply by ticking boxes for different colors. I can just go through on there, just showing how far we're complete in this project.
drop my scaffolding on. What I could say is though, we're up to here and we've actually gone 75%, let's say, through the brickwork. There was inclement weather in in December. It was snowing. We couldn't um, we couldn't do any of the brickwork on there. We can just have that as 75% um, as well, for example. So we're saying we're actually behind on on site now um, because of the inclement weather. I can show you to my client what the difference is going to be in a minute. For that, I'll just show you um, if we go on to the earned value table, it shows you from putting in your progress, it shows you how much you should, if I just open this up a bit more, it shows you how much um, you know, you're losing by this being behind. You should have you know, by now got an extra £1,700 uh, um, if you were up to this date. Um, it's saying you've actually um, it's saying you've actually been paid nine thousand um, five hundred uh, so far, and you should have been paid eleven thousand um, two hundred pounds off your twenty nine of your twenty nine thousand five hundred in there. So I should really spread this out for you. So you can keep control of uh, your costs in there like so. Now if I wanted to go back to my entry table and I want to see what, what damage does this do to my project, I can just go on the top and I can click on the reschedule tasks. So if I click on the reschedule tasks, it's just moved that along. So where it's got the black line on here, you can click on here as well, you can double click on there, open the chart properties and you can actually highlight this area in a different colour. So it shows you what it's done to the project. To, um, so if I scroll across a little bit and scroll down, it's actually put my hand over, it's supposed to be on the 28th and it's actually put it back um, a few days through, through that inclement weather. If I go into my if I go into my progress table, it's shown on the right hand side it's shown a slippage day overall for my projects. Um, I'm nine point five days behind on my um uh, brickwork, 4.5 on my block work, um, but because it's changed uh, the critical path, it's actually the brickwork can be um, can get back in fine. So it's got a slippage of 4.5 days overall. So it's carried the project over 4.5 days. Now that's just something you can use just to show you um, how far you you know could be behind. What you can do is look at this now and think. Right, how am I going to get this project um, back on time? What am I going to have to do to do that? I could pump some more resources, for example, into my um, suspended timber floor. So get maybe an extra gang in if I did that. And I did um, put an extra gang in and it's 10 days in there. I could make that five days by either typing it on there by having extra labor. I can click that back in there and that's just controlled um, the job again and brought it back in on time and as you saw on there it actually changed the critical activity so now the brickwork to the second floor is you must get that done on this time or again it will make the project overrun and that's really the little tools um, you just need to use um, really when you're um, going through the progress of your project um, using the what we just gone through is putting in the if we're doing it this way not through estimator just putting in your costs in the resource costs um, part of the project in the fixed cost prices and then going into your storing your baseline afterwards storing it there so you can show these um, variations and then what you can do then is go into your progress table 
and type in your progress against there, highlights it in green, and it shows it to where your um, your actual time is now, where you should be, by again clicking on there, view project details, and clicking what the time is now. Okay, so some that something a little bit extra you could do um, if you uh, you know if you wanted to add this in, what you could do is you can just scroll down on here. You can actually, while doing this, if you go into resource costs, actually I'll stay in my entry table to start with, you can actually add in your valuation period. So if I go on to my insert, you can insert a reoccurring task. I could call it valuation. And I can say it happens every month. I uh, say it happened three times, for example. Um, obviously, do the duration of the project. And it's just added these these items here, which if I use my plus and minus button, I can open them up. So it's got my valuation one on there on the 10th of uh, December. And what you can use is you can use this um, project view details and you can pipe, type um, put in on here to the 10th of December press OK press OK again and then we can look in our earned value um, so we can we could look in our um, earned value where it showed you how much you should have made so far and you can actually go into your costs, go into the income, my first valuation, now I could actually put in, say we have £2,000 at this stage if that's where it was, I can put that in there, if I click on here and show my cash flow, it's just saying, well we're actually behind if um, we were putting that in, but it's showing you your money going out, what you should have in at this stage, so it should be there. So if um, I'd done it properly, I do apologise. I would have put in what the actual value would have been, say 5,000. Right, I'm going to put in, say, 5,000 in here. And it just shows you how, you know, where, where you should be and how it's rising up in the second valuation. Say we speeded up the work and looking at the earned value table before this, it was actually another, say, 8,000 this time. And it's just saying how how well you're going through that with your your money, basically showing what's coming in, what's coming out through your valuation periods. So you can show that on there. So there's a lot of so some basic tools you can use um, for planning a project and keeping it in control on on here. Um, I've just shown you a few. There's so much more the software can do, but obviously we have we don't have too much time. So um, what you can do, if you want to take it a little bit further and we show you some more, you can ring up any of our advisors, which I'll show you at the end, and they can run through it on a demo. So that was basically just if you wanted to set up the software yourself without the estimator. What we do now is just go into the, um, the uh, if you imported it from Estimator Express. So if I open up this one, just bear me one second, let's take a swig of water. Thanks for waiting there. So what we have here is, also you can see a lot more detail. This is what would happen if you have Estimator Express and you imported it into um, Project Expert and how you import it, I just had it um, up open quick um, just for accessibility, um, but you would have 
clicked on here to import. That's the button up here, and you just select one of the. So this is on my computer now. So some of the jobs um, I've done in different demonstrations um, in Estimator, and I would have picked off um, one of these. Um, so this is job 65. I'd have clicked on that and pressed OK, and it would just opened it up like so on here. Okay. Now what Estimator does, like I said, with the resource costs, it has it all labelled out for you. So for for a whole project, it was had the labour cost, the plant cost, the material cost, which you can monitor through your project, and also using um, you know the progress table, going through it, like I showed you before in the last um, the last bit of the demonstration I just showed you. So you know you know how to do all that, adding in the how, how far the job's gone along by clicking on the um, the different tabs and going through the clicking on the um, different tabs and just showing the progress through there and putting in your actual timeline in there and it hasn't shown it up on there and it's because I haven't stored the baseline but in this part of the demonstration I just want to show you how you can use this to manage resources because I've shown you it in the last part basically how you can add in the progress so what we're seeing on here is we've got at the bottom we've got the histogram open and it's shown your labor for this project and it says for like this project what, what we're doing it's got the graph on the bottom and it's just showing the um, the amount of labor we got highest I think we got is um, eight and then where it's got the red items on there, it's saying the labor doesn't match the um, the time it takes to do the activity. So either you need to add more labor into that or you need to um, um, you need to extend that part of the project. So as we can see on here, it's relevant to what's happening up here. So it's in the brickwork shell I can see. So if I go onto my brick layer, it's showing right for this project uh, I'm going to need, if I want to get it done on 15 days, I'm going to need to add um, some more resources. And what Estimator does, um, because it sends it in from the graph it produces in Estimator, um, if you haven't changed that yourself, what you can have a look at is it does put in the time scales for you. If we go into the resource units button, it shows you for the brickwork shell, it's saying it's doing it in this many hours. 253 um, hours and that's roughly about 29 days so it is um, so on um, SMA I've shown you that and what we want to do is on the brickwork shell we want to really we can either what we can do we can on here it's got the brick loan and make gang we got one of them what we could do we could for example add another gang in to there um, to manage the resources click on that and it's taken that away. Um, you can either do it do it that way. It's obviously your decision now. You're the project manager, so you either want to add an extra gang, or I'll kick it back to the normal one again, or we can extend extend this to um, the 29 days, which it, sh it should be done in um, with one gang. So if I just go up, I can drop it on 20 days, and you can see it's started to level that out but we still we still um, won't be able to do it in that time so I can actually just pop it in here and press 29 days and it's just shown um, that it's leveled out as well so there's a little um, bit of red on top but I'm sure um, if you get a hot poker out on site they will uh, they get um, they get that little bit of red out of there for you um, what we got now is again showing the critical path so if I Go to the default. We're on the project. We're on the. Uh, we were on the project X for that. So it's still got the critical path in there for you and the activities which have float, which you can you know manage them resources around. I'll go back to the project layer. I'll see it's color coded for the different um, different labor use for them. So like a brick layer, for example, is in purple, and you got uh, for your ground workers, you got brown, for example. Um, what I'll do now is just show you how you can merge another job into the estimator so you can see how many um, jobs are you know 
if you've got more than one job running at the same time, um, how that might affect your, your labor resources um, and what you might need to do. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to import the actual same job um, we've got in here just to show you how it can um, how you how it can collide like the resources. Um, so if I just do that, what I do to merge in another project is make sure I save this one, and then what I do is I press file and I just press merge. So you would have saved it somewhere like your desktop from Estimator, and then what I can go down to in here is I can go to the number 66, I think. Here we go there, we can open that up. And then if I'm merging a project in, I can go on number four. Press OK. And if we look on the, if I just scroll down, press on the labor, you can see for these two jobs running, how the labor affects it um, if you've got these jobs running at the same time. And if I, um, if I make it a bit easier for you to see here, I can just, what you can also do at the top, you can change your toolbars how you like it. So I can just move these around for you so you can see a bit more of the screen. Which makes it a lot easier for you to see. And then if I scroll this a bit further down, if I open this up, as you can see, where we got our um, discrepancy again, we got it with the brickwork shell. We can see that's not on time again. Um, it's not, you're going to need more labor to get that, um, to get the job actually done in this time. What I also just show you quickly before I just show you how to do that is with the plus and minus buttons at the top through the indent, what you can do is if you had, for example, quite a few jobs, if you're a contractor that had quite a few jobs running over three months, you can have them individually um, on Project Expert, so you can look at the job individually, but you could also um, collate all the jobs you had on here by using the merge, and what you can do, obviously it's quite hard to see everything, so if you just wanted to look at one, you can just take that, you can minus it up, and it's just um, hidden all them details for that, and it's just shown us um, uh, job 66 here. So if I just plus it open again, it's shown them both at the same time. So that's a um, nice little tool just to hide that for you. So on here again, we got the um, where we were was we want to we got um, we want to allocate our resources so they're running efficient uh, so the job's running efficiently. We've got two options. Um, what we can do is we can either we could move this job along. So to uh, level out the resources, so I could hold it, press the right button down key on there, and I could move it across, like so, maybe to over here. Do that, and what it's actually done is, it's obviously, if I scroll down on here, it's, if I open this up a bit, it's shown us our resources are now more level throughout the job, so, but what it hasn't shown us is that it's obviously made this job number 66 a lot longer, so that will be dependent on your client. If you know you're allowed to um, let the job run a bit longer, if you can't, um, you might want to add another um, another another gang into the project. So how you can do that again is you see now we got our labour resources at the bottom. Um, what we can do is we can add in another gang. So if I scroll up on here. To my bricklayers again, so I go and look at my bricklayers for both jobs. I'm going to need more resources in. Do that. So I press two on there. And if I show you that, it's now leveled out the resources again. So what I've just shown you now is just basically how you merge in another project into the project expert, and then if there's colliding activities where resources are going to need it be needed at the same time for both jobs, um, what you can do to either make the job slightly longer on one and level out the resources or to add another gang in um, to get to make the jobs run on the correct time, what they should be. But obviously that's your decision as the project manager to do. Um, 
if you wanted to, what you want to obviously do with this, you don't just want to have it on your computer, you want to have it printed out. So if we wanted to print this out, um, all we have to do is, if I just go onto the print preview, oh, if I just come back out of that, close that, that's because I was clicked on the resources level. If I just click on this page here for the project, for project details, if I click on here and then go to preview, it will bring up the project which you can have printed out on your um, on your site office. But what obviously what you can do is this is on A4, so it's squeezed in a bit. What you can do, you can print it out in maybe two pages. So I can just click on the options button I did there, click on the page. I could put it out onto two pages. Let's close. And that's just shown um, one half, uh, one of the pages printed out, um, how you can show that going across. And then what you could also do is, obviously there would be the rest of it on the X page. It also um, is relevant to this box here. So what you can actually do is on the um, project expert layout, you could close these in. So it's just got the... Um, job description there, so it makes it a bit longer as well, so you don't have to have all these parts in it for you. Um, I can just, sh sh before that, I'll just show you, if you wanted to look at, say you did like some of our customers we have have got um, lots of different jobs running at different times, but they might get a something, something simple like a garden, someone might ring up and just want a garden wall done, and um, if, you, if it was just for a certain period of time, what you can actually do is, you can print out from and um, to basically on here. So you, if I just went into something for this job, um, I wanted the garden wall done. And I wanted it done in this period, October 10th to maybe um, November the 30th. If I press, if I go to the page again and just put that to one, press close. It's just shown me what it's shown me just for that period of time, what I've got going on um, for the different jobs I'm for this these two jobs I'm doing. So obviously I've got my plastering going on, my electrical second fix, empty jobs. So I've got my brick layers on anything there, so I could fit them in. I think in this period for my garden wall, and that's just showing you uh, you know another part of the software where you can just um, which will help you for planning. I think really that's. Um, know all we can um, uh, show today but if I just um, if I just click on here if there's any questions let's have a little look so one of the um, questions I've got on here is with um, the critical path if you change um, if you change the critical activity, does that affect um, the rest of the job? Well, what it will do with, um, if it's the critical activity, it will show you, um, it will move on the entire job um, if that is delayed. So if it was one of the blue lines, which are non-critical, and that, was, um, that moved up a little bit further than the critical line it was linked to, that would then change into the, the critical activity. But if it just went up a little bit, not quite up to its total float, then that would be running in on time. Um, with the other questions, I'll send them at you via email. Um, I've got my email address here if you um, need to ask any, um, any other questions at all about the software. At the moment, we do have an offer on for it at 399, but that does end on the um, 20th of December. And then you also get the update in the following year for the new software coming out because you get support and updates for a year. With that price, you're obviously going to get the tech support so you'll be able to call up and run through the software uh, with us when you're first setting it up. Um, I think we've got some existing customers on as well. And I'm sure uh, you know they, you know you guys can call up if you're struggling with anything and we can run, run it through with you. Um, and Basically, that's it. So thanks very much for watching the Project Expert webinar. Um, to go ahead with the software, if you're um, a new customer wanting to buy it, 
there's a number on that, um, or you can email me on this number. Um, thanks very much, and I look forward to hearing to look forward to hearing from you.